Hey church family, welcome to another edition of Church at Home. Uh, we are excited to be with you this morning, although we'd ideally like to be with you in person. Uh, we are coming through your mobile screen or maybe a TV screen or your computer screen somewhere in the world this morning, so we're, we're grateful to be with you. We had some cool stories of people watching all over the world last week at, at Church at Home, the online experience we have here, some people in Japan and some people here in San Diego and then all over the United States. So we, we pray however this finds you, we pray that you're healthy, we pray that you're rested and you're with family. We've, uh, we, we really miss you a ton. Pastor Rick told me this week, you know, the gospel must advance under less than ideal circumstances. And we are living in a less than ideal circumstance right now. But I do believe uh, that the church is rising up in unique and creative ways. And so we're actually gonna talk about some of the testimonies this week of how we put the spiritual practices into discipline. Um, and we have another incredible message from Pastor Wes. We'll also have worship this morning as well as prayer. So uh, sit back, uh, grab your favorite coffee drink, and uh, welcome to Church at Home. Church family, how are you? I hope you're doing well. We miss you so much. Although I've been enjoying Church at Home with my wife Monica and the kiddos, uh, it's been really sad because we're not experiencing it with you. If you've been feeling like how I've been feeling, you might need a little bit of encouragement. You know what I love about Sundays when we gather here at the building is we actually get to see each other, right? We get to hug, we get to talk, we get to catch up, but we also get to see how the Word of God is impacting each other's lives. It's one of my favorite things after every service is that we come outside here and we get to connect and catch up on life, but we also get to talk about what God's doing in our life. How did the Word that day, how did that speak to our life, how is that changing our life? It's one of my favorite parts because I love hearing how God and His Word are changing your life because it inspires me to do the same. It actually challenges me to do the same. How can I let God's Word change my life as well? And so what we wanted to do uh, in this portion of our church online experience is just share a few testimonies with you. Just to let you know that even though we're not gathering here together in this building, we are gathering online. And God's Word is still cutting to our hearts and changing our lives. God is working through you, your prayers, your thoughts of other people in our church family as you help make captivate what it is. God's word is still working. And so we just wanted to share a few testimonies of how that's been happening in the life of our church in this last week. And as we jump into some of these, just wanted to give you a heads up on what a testimony actually is. A testimony is not just a big church word that we see in the Bible. It's actually something very simple. A testimony is a story of how God took his word and turned it from information into transformation into somebody's life. How he turned it from information to transformation into somebody's life. It's just about how God showed up in someone's world right where they were at in that moment and he changed their life. And so we want to share some of these with you now. Last week as we opened the word together, we talked about these things called spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines help turn God's principles into practice. They turn them into action so they can actually change our life. We had never really talked about spiritual disciplines before at length, but now we have the time in our life to actually practice them. And so we laid out several of the spiritual disciplines that we see in the Bible, and we talked about, man, how are we going to experience them in our life? And so we had some people in our church write in this week of how they've been practicing these spiritual disciplines and how they've been changing their life. One of the spiritual disciplines we talked about was meditation. Meditation. Meditation, we said, is simply making your worries face God's Word until victory. And after talking about that, we had a, a woman in our church write in, a mom, and she was actually talking about how she experienced some meditation uh, in her life that helped. She said that during the week, a few days ago, that she was sitting there with her kids and she was just considering all that was going on in the world right now with the tragedy and the virus and all this, and she just was full of fear. In one moment, she looked at her kids and she felt kind of helpless. She felt, man, I don't know how this is going to affect their life. Are they going to be able to have a normal life? Can I protect them? She said that was probably her biggest fear. I felt like I couldn't protect my kids. And so what she did, she turned to her husband. She said, hey, I need a few minutes. And she went in the bathroom and she took this scripture that we shared last week on our church online experience, Psalm 3.3. She took this verse and it's about David. David, uh, at that time, he's really anxious. He's looking at the enemies all around his life. And he says, Lord, I'm worried, but you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. You're the glory and the lifter of my head. She said she took this verse and she recited it over and over again for about three or four minutes. And she said, I recited it until I felt the peace of God wash over my life. I finally believed it and it changed my life. I love that picture of meditation and how it works in our life. Speak it over yourself. Affirm it. Believe it. Keep saying it again until it takes root and turns into transformation in your life. Another spiritual discipline we talked about was generosity. 
And we said that what God gives to you becomes more powerful when you share it with those around you. What God gives to you becomes more powerful. It goes farther. It's more fruitful when you share it with those around you. And we had someone in our church, uh, they had let us know that in the season that they've been fruitful. They've been tithing to captivate church and they've been faithful in giving. But this season, it's going to be kind of hard for them. With all the chaos that's going on, they're kind of worried about their work. Their work is kind of a question mark. There's a person that owns their own business and they have had some of their clients let them know, hey, I don't know if I'm going to need uh, your service at this time. I think I'm going to be able to take a break right now. And so because of that, they've been kind of worried, man, how's money going to come in? How am I going to provide? It's, it's been a real worry. And I know that some of us have been experiencing that same thing. How are we going to continue not only to provide for our family, but be generous, right? Continue to be faithful with what God gives us to give back to him. Well, they let us know that this week they've received multiple checks in the mail from people who say, hey, I love you and I want to support you in this time. Multiple people who are their clients who say, I know that even though I'm not getting this service right now, I still want to support you because I appreciate the work that you do do for me. And this person was just letting us know, man, they're praising God. Thank you, God, for honoring not only my faithfulness, but letting me see how faithful you are when we're faithful to God and watching him provide for us. Uh, how encouraging that was to me in my life to see how God provides in the midst of our generosity. The last testimony I want to share about is on the spiritual discipline we talked about last week we called service. We said that service is a really big deal to God. God would want us to know that in his kingdom, if you're too big to serve, then you're too small to lead. Leadership is actually all about serving. And, and with that, we heard about another mom in our community who told us this week about a unique and creative way that God has given her to serve somebody else in our community. At this time, she's nursing her infant, and although that's going really well, she found out about another mom in our community who hasn't really been able to do that. Not only has she not been able to nurse, she actually hasn't been able to find formula. At this time, as you know, a lot of stuff is getting sold out, and it's hard to find certain items, and this has been really hard for her. And so what this mom has been doing is she's been taking the extra breast milk that she has and dropping it off on the doorstep of this other mom so she can feed her child. My first thought there was, wow, I can't do that. That's amazing. My second thought was, man, what a creative and unique way to serve somebody else in this time. And what an encouragement for us. What's a unique and creative way God's giving you right now to be able to serve the people around you? Consider that now. Let's not miss out on this season. If you have a testimony in your life of how God's word is transforming you, we would love to hear about it. Please email us at info at captivatesd.com. Again, info at captivatesd.com. We'd love to celebrate with you how God's word is transforming your life in this season. As we jump into the Word, I'd love to start off with some prayer, just to have God prepare our hearts for anything He might want to speak to us today. You know, something I love to say pretty often in church is this, you hearing from God today has much less to do with my ability to preach, has much more to do with your willingness to open your heart, has much less to do with my ability to teach you and preach and make you laugh and tell stories. It's got a lot more to do with you opening your heart to His voice, and I think through prayer, uh, we can do that together now. So would you bow your heads and close your eyes as we have a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this opportunity to open your word and hear from you. I pray that today, God, whatever word you'd have to speak, would it fall on our hearts individually? There's no way I could know what every single person hearing this message today, how they would need to be encouraged, what words they would need to hear. But I pray we would take hope in the fact that you do know, God. And so I just pray that in this time, Lord, that you would speak loudly, you'd speak clearly. Some of us have never needed to hear you more than we do right now. If we're in fear, if we're in anxiety, if we're wondering what the future is going to hold, I pray what we'd know is right now you're good. Right now you have something good to teach us. And I pray we'd open up our heart to that. Lord, speak to us loudly today as one big church family, no matter where we're at, where we're watching this, if we're on a run or we're in our living room or in our bed or with our family, whatever we're doing, wherever we are. I pray we'd feel like one big church family as you speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. As we jump into the Word, you'll notice that we're not in any specific sermon series right now. Normally, as we start a new month, we start a brand new sermon series. But in this time, with so many things changing, uh, with the virus kind of changing and what the government's telling us to do and what not to do, with so many moving pieces, we just want to be very sensitive to what God is speaking to us. So we've been asking God through prayer, God, what do you want us to teach this week? What do you want us to focus on now? What do we need the most? And so we're not in any kind of series. We're just opening our hearts, uh, opening our ears. God, what are you speaking this week? And as I was praying for what to share, I felt like God speak very clearly to me that we need to fight for our values. 
We need to fight for our values. Here at Captivate Church, we have three church values that we talk about a decent amount. I haven't preached to them directly in a long time. Today, I'm going to be able to expound on them because I really think we need to talk about them. And the reason is, is because of this. The three values that we have, uh, they're a little bit harder, they may seem, to live out right now. A little bit more difficult because they involve each other and we're not really together as much as we normally are. They seem a little bit harder to live out. But even though they're a little bit harder to live out right now, we don't need them any less. right? We need them still. They have a thriving relationship with God and a thriving relationship with each other. We still need to live these things out. And so what I want to do is I want to read a Bible story that I think is going to help us. Help us live these things out in a season like this. And so if you've got a Bible, you want to go ahead and pull it out. We're going to be in Mark chapter 4 is where we're going to be today. Mark chapter 4, a little bit of context for the story. Jesus just gets done preaching to a large crowd, encouraging them, healing some people. And then in one moment, he turns to his disciples and says, Hey guys, let's get into a boat and go to the other side of the lake. It's kind of funny to me because if you follow Jesus for any amount of time, you know that if he asks you to get into a boat, that's a bold proposition. Because following Jesus doesn't mean that you'll never have obstacles, you won't face opposition, you won't have a rainy day. In fact, quite the opposite is true for the followers of Jesus as we read in the Bible. They faced all kinds of opposition. God's hope to us is not that we won't face obstacles, but that he'll be with us in the middle of it. And that's what we're going to see right here in the story. I'm going to start reading in verse 35. If you have a Bible, pull it out. If not, it's going to be up here on the screen. Here's what the Bible says. It says, On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took with him and put him in the boat, just as he was. And the other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat. This is one of the reasons I think this story is so relevant to where we are, is because we are actually in a storm right now. Our world is facing a very unique storm, probably one different than we've ever seen before. I was talking to a man who's been a pastor in San Diego for about 40 years, very, very good friend of mine. I look up to him a great deal, and I asked him, I said, hey, have have you ever seen anything like this before? Have you ever had to pastor through something like this? And he said, no. He said, no. And he said this, this is a unique storm that we've ever, than one that we've ever faced before. And so it's just a unique time. And so I think this story is going to let us know, man, how did these guys react to the storm? How does Jesus react to the storm? What's the encouragement we can pull out of it? And so that's what I want to see here in this story. They went through a great windstorm. The boat was filling. Verse 38 is where we'll pick up the story again. But he was in the stern, Jesus, sleeping on a cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he woke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. I think that's funny when there's a great calm because the Bible literally indicates that these fully grown men are freaking out for their lives. Help, somebody help, we're going to die. And then in one moment, there's a great calm. And I imagine Peter looking to the rest of the disciples like, hey, why were you guys so worried? You know, as if he wasn't to. No, they were all freaking out. And in one moment, Jesus brings a calm to the storm, verse 40. And he says to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? I think in this season, it's a great opportunity to see more and more who Jesus is. What I want to do with this story is this, is I want to kind of tackle each one of our values and give you a refresher on what they are and then take this story and apply it to them. How can we live out each one of our church values even in a season like this? Our first church value is family. It's family. Come on, if you've been at our church for any amount of time, you should know that. It's something that we talk about. It's also something that we're known for, right? The Captivate Church, it's one big house. You come here not just to meet with friends, but to actually create family. Something we talk about a lot. As our church gets bigger, we are focused on how to get smaller. We say that we want to be a small church with a lot of people. It doesn't matter how many people come here. How do we still create this atmosphere where everybody feels like they matter and they can connect and they have relationships? We want to focus on discipleship, right, which only happens through relationships. We want you walking into church and not just worshiping next to your friends, but again, worshiping next to family. And why do we use this word family? We use it because it's in the Bible. It's very scriptural, right? Jesus, when he tells us how to pray in Matthew chapter 6, it's called the Lord's Prayer. He says, when you pray, make sure you say this, Father. Right? He actually uses the word Abba, which is more endearing than the word Father. It says Dad 
or daddy, that he's our father. He's not just our king or he's not just our master. He's actually our father. The Bible, again, talks about this in John chapter 1 and verse 12. John says there, if you're a believer, then you have the right to be children of God, not just friends of God, children of God. And then one more time in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, it says that God the Father looks down at us and he calls us sons and daughters. What kind of language is this? This is family language. The funny thing about that is this, just because we're family doesn't mean we're the same. We're actually very different. Our church is full of people with different backgrounds, experiences. Some of us grew up in church, some of us did not. But I want us to start seeing that as a strength and not a weakness. It's actually a strength and here's why. Because in church, we don't want uniformity, we want unity. We don't want uniformity, we want unity. Those two words are very different. Uniformity says that everybody needs to look the same, think the same way, worship God the same. How many know that would be boring? If we were all in church singing the same way and dancing and worship the same way. I know some of you don't dance. You're like, Wes, that's just you. That's weird. Okay, but it'd just be boring. We don't want to all look the same. In fact, there's a scripture in Revelation chapter 7 that talks about when we're in heaven one day as one big capital C church with people from all around the world, all different kinds of backgrounds. It says, as we're worshiping Jesus together, every nation, tribe, and tongue is going to be represented. That's what I call diversity right there, that we are different and that's okay. See, we don't come together and worship God because we like the same things. We come together because we need the same person. We, we don't come together in church because we like the same things. We come together because we need the same person and his name is Jesus. The truth is we're all different, and because we're different, we're probably dealing with this tragedy differently. We're thinking about it differently. We're looking at this virus a little bit differently. Some of us are overly worried. Some of us are just trying to ignore it altogether. Some of you might be really excited, right, that you get a few days off of school or work. Others of us are like, what am I going to do, right? I don't want to stay cooped up this long. I'm going to lose my mind. We're all dealing with this differently because we are different. I know in our house, we're very different. My wife and I are reacting to this tragedy a little bit differently because we're just wired different. But that's okay. What family says in the middle of that says, you know what, I know we're different, but I want to give you what you need. Uh, I'm going to encourage you the way you need it. I'm going to pray for you the way you need it. It's okay that we're a little bit different in how we're dealing with this and how we're looking at this. But I want to remind you of how God is with us in the middle of it all. You see, that's really what we need. We all need somebody to remind us of the positives of Jesus in the middle of the negatives of life. We need someone to remind us of the positives of Jesus in the midst of the negatives of life. And even though that's really what family is, you might be thinking to yourself this thought right now. In this season, how do I stay connected? In this season, how do I stay connected? Some of the avenues that I'm normally connected, I can't have right now. I can't gather as a church. I can't even go to my small group. I can't meet with my mentor, whatever it might be. Right? How do I stay connected? And, and with that, it makes us look back at our story. Uh, if you see in the story, I want to give three observations of how we can live out these values. And the first one as it relates to families is this. Observation number one is even in the midst of the storm, they had each other. Even in the midst of the storm, they had each other. And what I want you to know right now is you have each other. You have our church family. Even though we cannot gather together in this building, we are together in prayer. We are together spiritually. I know the enemy right now would want you to feel isolated, that you're all alone, that you're going through what you're going through by yourself. It's not true. It's not true. Even in the midst of this storm, we have each other. We're all in the same boat. And with that, as a church staff, we want to say that we're very committed to keeping the family together, to keeping the family connected. And so we want to give three things for each of these points, three things that we're doing as a church staff to make sure that you guys stay connected. And of these three things, here they are. They're going to pop up on the screen for you. The first one, very obvious, we're doing it right now. It's church online. It's church at home, and we're going to be doing that every weekend. We want you guys to continue to hear the word and have it change your life, and we're all kind of learning the same things together. We're going to continue to do that. The second thing is this, is right now we are working on how to give our community leaders, the way we do small groups, a way to meet with their groups virtually, meet with them online, even if it's kind of a Skype situation or a FaceTime, how can we get that out to our leaders so you guys can at least check in and pray, at least check in with where you're at in each other's life. We're working on that right now. Hope to have it to you really soon. And the third thing we're really excited about, the other day we had our staff meeting. We said, man, what are some creative ways that we can serve our church right now, keep them connected? And here's what somebody said. Hey, let's take our whole database of all of the contacts we have of people in our church, which is a lot. And why don't we follow up with all of them? 
Why don't we give them all a phone call or an email, depending on whatever information that you guys have given to us. And so that's what we're working on right now. We took everybody in our database, we split it up amongst our whole staff, and we're just going through it. We're trying to give everybody, again, a phone call, an email, some kind of connection, just to say, hey, we love you guys, we're here for you. Do you need prayer? Do you need an encouragement? What's something that we can do for you? And so we're going to be doing that, so don't be surprised. <laughs> If you get a phone call or an email from somebody here on staff, we want to make sure our family stays connected in this season. Our second church value is freedom. It's freedom. And the way we like to say it is this, that Jesus loves you so much that he meets you as you are, but he loves you too much to leave you as you are. He loves you so much that he comes to you just as you are, but he loves you too much to leave you as you are. That might sound like bad news, but it's actually great news. It's one of the biggest encouragements in my life is that I actually get to become more like Jesus each and every day, every month, and every year. You know, I love the memories that we've been able to create these last 18 months as a church family. We're new, but we've already done some amazing things. We've seen God move in some amazing ways, but I'm really excited for the new memories we're going to be able to create. I'm excited for one day as we look back on these days at pictures of what we were like and the things that we did. We'll probably laugh, right, at some of the things that we weren't very good at. We'll laugh at what our wardrobe looks like or maybe some of our hairdos. And hopefully things have changed by then. But by then and years from now, I hope that as we look back, we notice that more has changed in our life than just our hairdo. More has changed than just what we look like or some of the things that we're doing. But we've actually become more like Jesus. We're more generous. We're more humble. We consider other people above ourselves more and more. This is something that we should strive to achieve in our life. And you might ask yourself, how do I even measure that? Is there a way to measure myself becoming more like Jesus? I think there is. Perhaps the best way to measure that is just to ask your spouse or to ask your mentor or to ask a friend, somebody around you who knows you really well. Hey, am I more like Jesus than I was a month ago or more like Jesus than I was a year ago. It'd be really interesting to hear their response. Are you growing more? Are you becoming freer and freer as time goes on? You see, what Jesus doesn't want us to become is a book club where we read his word and we learn things about it, but we never really apply it to our life. Right? We have information, but it never really turns into transformation. That's not really freedom. That's not where it comes from. You see, freedom is turning theology into activity. It's turning theology into activity, what we learn about God and His Word and actually applying it to our life. And the struggle in this season is this, and this is a thought you might wonder to yourself, how do I even grow spiritually in this season? How do I even grow spiritually in this season? Some of the avenues that we grow the most have been kind of cut off, right? We can't gather together as a church in this building. We can't necessarily meet as a small group in person or meet with people that we want to meet with. How do we grow spiritually in this season? And that really brings us back to the story in Mark chapter 4 where we get our second observation. Second observation is this, even in the midst of the storm, they had Jesus. <laughs> even in the midst of the storm, they had Jesus. Listen, we cannot waste our storm. We cannot waste this season. It might seem like things are in chaos and they're kind of all over the place, but this is a really good opportunity to sit down and actually be with Jesus one-on-one -on -one and build that connection. When you read the story, you notice that the guys are freaking out. They're looking at the storm and they're in panic. And Jesus is like, guys, where's your faith? I know that the storm is here, but so am I. What Jesus wanted them to focus on is what he wants us to focus on in the season, and that's this. He wants us to focus more on our Savior than our storm. He wants us to focus more on our Savior than our storm. How can we do that in this season? Listen, sometimes the worst thing you can do in your life is waste your storm. Sometimes the worst thing you can do is waste your storm. I had a mentor tell me something years ago that I'll never forget. He said, don't waste your hard seasons. Do not waste them because what we notice in life is often it's our hard seasons who make us who we are. You know, it's not my blessings that made me who I are. It was my battles. It was the tough things that I had to fight through. That actually made me who I am. It made me press into God more than ever. It made me find my God. It made me realize that he is the God of the storm. And I maybe wouldn't have known it to the degree that I know it had I not gone through some hard things in my life. Sometimes it's the greatest miseries in our life. God will turn those into our greatest ministries. Why? Because it was only there we really found just how much He was the God of our life and the God of our storm. Don't, don't resist this hard season in your life. God's teaching you something that you really need. Press into it and lead into it. You know, we started off this year with kind of a funny series we called Slow Down. The reason I call it a funny series is because normally in January when you're preaching sermons, you're talking about vision and let's grab a hold of every opportunity that this year has to offer. And we talked about some of that, but we also shared this idea that God laid on our heart in a really heavy way. And it was this idea of we need to slow down. 
We need to slow down because this year is not about all the things that we could do. It's about what we're called to do, right? It's about narrowing in about what God is speaking to us right now in this season and shedding kind of everything else, every distraction away from us. And what's funny is right now we're in a season of slowdown. Whether we want to be or not, we had a guy in our church text me this week and he said, hey, if, if we ignored this word from God to slow down, here you go. <laughs> we kind of got it whether we wanted it or not. And so I don't want us to waste this season where God is saying, hey, I'm going to have you slow down and focus in on what I have for your year. And the reason slowing down is so important for us is because of this. When we slow down, his voice goes up. When we slow down his voice, the volume of his voice, it actually goes up. We can hear him in a clearer way. And so what we want to do in the season is hear God. What is he speaking? What is we saying? How is that going to lead to more freedom? And to help you gain more freedom in this season and really live this out, we as a staff are committed to that. So we want you to know the three things that we're going to do in this season for you to experience more freedom in your life. The first one is weekly content. We want to put stuff out on social media, whether it's videos or posts, devotionals, prayers, things for you to consume, to, for you to get closer to God, learn more about God and His Word. And so be watching on our social media streams as we post more content than usual, more videos and kind of more devotionals for you to have in your life. And so be watching out for those. The second one is we want to hear from you. We'd love to talk with you. If you want to pray with somebody on the phone, if you want to connect with somebody or get some counsel or encouragement in the season, we would love for you to do so. Feel free to call us at our number that we have on our website or just email us. It might be easier at info at CaptivateSD.com. Info at CaptivateSD.com. We'd love to connect with you, pray with you, encourage you. If you need counsel, please let us know. And the third thing that we're going to do is we're going to start this thing that's really new to us and we're excited about it. But at this time, just to help us feel more connected and growing together, we're going to do live prayer on our social media outlets starting this next week. Uh, there's going to be more information on social media and through our email outlets just to let you know when this is happening. But we're going to have some live prayer times with some people on our staff and just to have people uh, to write in prayer requests that they're going through right now. We're just going to pray all together live and we're going to let you know when that's coming. We're also working on putting together a Q&A time with some of our past and for you to kind of be there for that and ask any question, anything you're facing in the season, something you want to know in the Bible, we'd love to connect with you in that way. Those are three things uh, that we're putting together right now as a staff to help you experience more freedom at this time. And our third church value is purpose. Purpose. We want to help you find what the purpose is in your life. And as we've been saying, what God does in you becomes more powerful when it comes out of you. When you actually give it away to somebody else. You know, some of the biggest moments in our life of growth is actually when we're helping other people out. We went to help them and we actually grew most in the process, which is why we say at church, we don't ask you to serve to grow the church. We ask you to serve to grow you. That's actually how God designed you. You know, perhaps the best way to find a breakthrough in your life is to help somebody else get a breakthrough in their life. Perhaps the best way for you to grow or have a breakthrough in your life is just by helping somebody else do the same. You know, that's one of the reasons I love reading the Bible so much. We get to read these stories about how men and women of God are just giving their life away. And one of the reasons I love reading these stories is because we get to learn how God interacts with his kids. If he's not calling us to do some of those very same things that he was calling them to do in the Bible, it's okay because we still learn how he interacts. As God partners with his kids, as he joins with them to change the world and bring a large impact, we get to see how God, again, interacts and how he partners with us because he does it the same way. What I love about God is he doesn't have favorite kids. He really doesn't. And so if he's got a plan and a purpose in somebody's life in the Word, you can bet that he's got the same thing planned out for you. As you read about how he interacts with these Bible characters, you're getting to learn his character, the way he speaks, the way he moves, the way he wants to partner with you as you find your purpose. A specific example of this in Scripture we find in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. A very famous verse, God tells Jeremiah, hey, before you were born, before you were even in your mother's womb, I knew you and I knew exactly what I was calling you to. You had a purpose way before you were even around. I knew what your purpose was. I had a plan for your life. And although we might not be called to the very same thing that Jeremiah was called to, what you know is you do have a calling that is specific and it is a plan from God. Know that it has to do with other people. It has to do with helping others see Jesus and follow Jesus. But the unique way that you're going to live it out in your life, God has a plan and a purpose just for you. What could that be? You know, we live in a very interesting moment in time right now. The way we get to serve people is perhaps different than we've ever done it before. What they need might be different than what they've ever needed before. And so we just need to consider, what might God be calling me to? What's my purpose in this season? 
I think one tool to find our purpose to think on is really just this. It's the crossroads of others' needs, my passions, and the Spirit's gifting in my life. That's often where we find our purpose. It's the crossroads of others' needs, my passions, and the Spirit's gifts in my life. This is often where we find our purpose. Consider those three things in your life in this season. What purpose might God be leading you to right now? But even as you consider what the purpose is in your life, you might think to yourself this thought, how do I even live out my purpose at this time? How do I even live out my purpose? I can't serve at church. It's hard to meet with people. So many things that we can't do right now. You might think it's kind of hard to live out this third value called purpose. What that does, it brings us back to the story again. And that really brings us our third observation from the story. And it's this, even in the midst of the storm, they were on their way to their purpose. Even in the midst of the storm, these guys, they were on their way to their purpose. See, now we see in the story why the devil brought the storm in the first place. If you continue to read the book of Mark, you notice that when they get to the other side, there's ministry waiting for them. There are a lot of people to encourage, to share Jesus with. They actually cast demons out of some people. They were on their way to their purpose. And this is exactly where some of you are at today. You're on your way to purpose. But in the middle, there's a storm. And what we learn in the story is this, that the storm is often preparation for our purpose. Our storm is often preparation for our purpose. Again, it's the battles in my life that made me who I am. The greatest ministry that comes out of me, it comes not because of the Bible classes that I took or books that I read or any stages I've ever preached on. It comes because of the hardships I've gone through in my life. It comes because of some of the victories and the battles and storms that Jesus has brought me through. And because I've been through it, it gives me compassion for other people. It gives me grace today to give that away to other people. Now I get to help walk them through it as well. Some of the biggest miseries in your life, God wants to use it. Here's what he likes to do. He likes to take your greatest miseries and turn them into your greatest ministries. Use them as ways that you can actually minister to other people. The storm, it's no longer a bad memory. It's actually preparation for you for the purpose that God was leading you to all along. And even in a season where we don't get to see each other as much as we would like face to face or be with each other as much as we really want to, we still want to help you discover what your purpose is and how to live it out. And so as a staff, we're doing three things in this season to help you live out your purpose. Uh, Number one is that if you're on a team, you're going to be hearing from your team leaders. Now, each and every week, there's going to be something that we're working on to reconnect and also, again, prepare ourselves for when we regather. And so some of the stuff might be, hey, what's some feedback for how we can lead even better? Uh, what's some training that we can have to make us even better? And then, again, how can we use some of our other gifts on our team to do things maybe we're not doing yet as a church? We want our teams to connect even more and use this storm as preparation time for when we regather. I would even encourage you, if you're not on a team, still feel free to sign up, you can do it on our website and have a team leader kind of oversee you in this time and help you develop what is the purpose in your life, especially as it relates to your church family. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to take Experience Captivate and we're going to put it online. Uh, something that we do the first Sunday of each month is there's a lunch that happens. People come and they kind of learn what is Captivate all about. You, you go from friend to family and we help you discover your purpose. In it, we take a couple tests, a spiritual gifts test, a disc test. And again, it just kind of helps you discover what we talked about in a minute ago. Some of the spirits gifting in your life. How has God designed you? So we want to take that content, put it online. Some of you, maybe you didn't have time to do it before, but hey, you got time to do it now. And so we're working right now to be able to put that on our website for you to experience that. Again, what is our church about? But what are you about? How did God design you? How can you contribute to this church family? And so as we develop that, we're going to let you in on when that's going to be posted, where you can access that content and be a part of that. And we'll let you know as time goes on. The third thing that we're going to do is is really starts right here, right now. And I want to challenge you with this. What we've been talking about these last few minutes is perhaps the season is preparation. Preparing you is what God is doing for the season that's about to come. And so how is he preparing you? What I want you to consider right now, and I want you to take a minute and do this. I want you to stop and I want you to write down what is one thing that God could be preparing you for in the season? What is one thing that God can bring out of your life that's good? He could bring out of your life that's going to bring you to more purpose. Consider how is this a a season where God's preparing me for what's coming? I want you to take a minute. I want you to think about some point today, and hopefully you do it right now. Just go ahead and write that down. It's a challenge that I'm giving you. What is one way God is preparing you for where you're going? I want you to write that down. I want you to think on it uh, during this week. I want you to share it with somebody in your life. Pray on it. 
And I just want you to hold on to that. It's a promise from God. What is he speaking to you right now? How is he preparing you for where you are going? What I hope we've given you today is some practical tools to live out these three values that we talk about so often as a church. Again, even though they might be a little bit hard to grab, we don't need them any less. We really need them in our life. And so I hope that you learn how to practice them with just you and Jesus. Build some spiritual strength in your life. And I hope that at the end of this season, I hope you're not just waiting for it to be over, but really you learn how to thrive right here, right where you are at. I hope by the time this is all over, we didn't just watch a little more Netflix and I'm kind of laughing at myself. I know my wife's laughing at me too because I've watched a ton of Netflix documentaries this week just trying to fill time as we can't really go out at night and spend time with people. And, but I hope that at the end of this time, we didn't just get through some of that, but we learned how to grow in a different way. You know, we didn't really choose this or decide this, but it kind of happened. And so how do we learn how to grow spiritually in this time right here, right now? And one last encouragement I would give you really is this. When you look back at that story in Mark chapter 4, Jesus says, peace, be still. And after he says peace, the Bible says there's a great calm. And what I want you to notice is the order by which those two things come into play in the story. Jesus says, peace, and then there's a calm. I think often in life, we are waiting for the calm to really experience peace. But I think what we see in the story is something we can experience right now is we don't need to wait for a calm. We don't need to wait for everything to calm down and figure itself out to experience peace. We can experience right here, right now, because Jesus is in the boat. He's with us. We're with each other. We're with him, and we're on our way to our purpose. And so as we transition into a time of worship, I think that's just a great thought to think on. How do we let our Savior speak to our storm not our storm, speak to our Savior? How do we experience peace before there really is a calm? Before there's a calm on the outside, we can have peace on the inside. And so as we transition uh, into worship with that, I'm going to pray a sin and I'm really excited to worship with you. Lord Jesus, we just pray that whatever word you would have spoke to us today, whatever encouragement you want us to have, I, I pray that this worship that we're about to have, would it, would it help it sink deeper into our heart? Would it not just be something in our head? Would it be something that transforms our life. Show us what that looks like. God, right now, I pray that the time that we're in, that we don't just wait for it to pass, but we know that you're in it right here, right now. I pray that as we look back, we can see some time that we spent with you, and we're we're glad for it. We're thankful for it. We actually had to slow down. Makes me think of Psalm 23, where you say, uh, sometimes, Lord, you have to make us slow down. You have to make us lie down so that you can restore our soul. That's what it says there in that scripture, and so I pray we'd receive that. God, you're making some of us slow down, whether we wanted to or not, But you're doing it for a reason, and it's to restore our soul. And so I pray that any truth that was for us today, God, make it sink deep into our heart. We're going to worship you now because you're worthy, God. I pray that wherever we're at, again, watching in our living room with our family, maybe we're by ourselves or we're on a jog, wherever we're consuming this content, Lord, I just pray we'd know right now we are worshiping you as one big church family. And so we worship you now, Lord. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. There's a grace where the heart is under fire Another way where the walls are closing in When I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the sea. Should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden, where another died for me, there is another in the fire. Dead, left for dead beneath the water I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between what remains of me 
and this reckoning. Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. Cause I know I will never be alone. There's another in the fire standing.
Hey, church family, thank you for joining us for another edition of Church at Home. We pray this blessed you and encouraged you today. Feel free to share it with friends and family that needed encouragement this week. If you're new here and you joined us for the first time online or maybe on Instagram, just shoot us an email at info at CaptivateSD.com. We want to get you connected to the family. We'll get you on the email list and get you connected here. Thank you again for everyone uh, who's continued their generosity in this season. It's really easy to give at CaptivateSD. D.com. We so appreciate your continued giving. And we want to make sure you're back here next week for another edition of Church at Home. We will see you then. Check in this week as well on our Instagram for content. We're going to be doing some uh, different devotionals and stuff, so we want to make sure uh, you guys stay connected. And then always uh, make sure uh, after the, the videos on, on Sundays here at Church at Home, you can click the notes section right below this. Uh, there's a little button that says notes, and you'll have a devotional pop up with icebreakers and questions to help you go a little bit deeper into this conversation this morning. So we love you. Thank you again for tuning in to Church at Home.